Hi everyone, it's spring here in Connecticut and at this time of year many of the plants that flower in the greenhouses have been sensing that winter and then that spring turnover that we see in terms of day length and temperature. And one of those plants is our Strongolodon vine. This is a vigorous climber that's native to the Philippines and it has these amazing colored flowers. This is really a turquoise, kind of a rare color that we find in nature. As you can see, a long raceme of blooms that comes out of it. And it always flowers for us in April. The blooming cycle is actually somewhat of a uh, mystery because we have some years when it's very heavy and we have other years when it's quite light. Uh, this is a heavy year. We have about 20 flower spikes that have come on this um, vine right here, which takes up a good quarter of the greenhouse. One thing about the Strongolodon vine is that it is a big, heavy grower, and it's really not a house plant. It's something you can grow in the window. I have seen it grown in containers, but the containers have to be fairly large, and you have to have quite a bit of support for them in order to get it large enough to flower. Uh, the plant here is planted in the ground. This is the old um, beds we have in the greenhouses here. One time they grew cut flowers, but many years ago many things got planted and one of the things we stuck in here was our Strongolodon vine. It took about two or three years, maybe a little longer, before it started to flower and I noticed at the time it was blooming the stem at the base had gotten to be about as big as my thumb and the plant had climbed up and started to spread itself around. One of the things that happens to this vine because it's in the ground and it is a rank grower it literally would take this greenhouse over. There would be no room for people, plants, or anything else if you let the strong Golodin vine go wild. And so we constantly um, are heading it back. But we want to make sure that we leave enough of that young growth and old growth to um, stimulate the flowers. And the other thing about its blooming is it flowers on very young growth, like young shoots, like these green shoots right here. You'll see spikes come off it. And it'll also go back and bloom off some of the very oldest wood where the stems are uh, maybe three quarters to uh, half an inch in width and the flower spikes will come out of that. Um, the flowers don't actually last that long. This is in full bloom right now, we consider that such. But it may last four or five days and then it goes by. So it's a fairly quick flowering cycle. There's the end of our last one here. You can see it's running all the way down. Um, has a very interesting pollination mechanism on it. This is in the legume family or uh, Fabinaceae family. It's actually pollinated by bats and the weight of their bodies as they uh, alight on the stem and the flower um, actually will pull this down and you can see the pollen coming out and the pistil comes out and then when the bat flies away or releases it, the pistil and the pollen return in and pollination occurs. The other thing is, is if we look at these flowers, they're filled with nectar and the nectar is actually um, quite sweet. Um, and you can see why a bat or any other creature might want to get in there and take a sip of it. As far as culture goes, it does have a little bit of problems with root disease in containers, so you want to watch out for that. And there's also insect problems. Mostly we have issues with aphids and thrip feeding on the young growth. Other than that, it's pretty immune to most bugs and diseases that we've seen here in the greenhouses. One of the things about it I've noticed over the years is it has kind of a funny growth cycle. It doesn't necessarily start growing in the springtime and shut off in the wintertime. It kind of grows through the winter and then kind of stops here and there. It's not what we would call a normal growing vine. It's kind of erratic and the shoots come out and then they run for a while and then they stop and they harden off and then more come. It's kind of a difficult plant to propagate, although we found that propagating it on this kind of wood right here where you've got firm growth, green stems, but the leaves are mature, is probably the best way to um, take cuttings from it and it is propagated by cuttings. There's no color in the world of flowers that can resemble the turquoise you find in this bloom. It is truly amazing. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information, visit us at logis.com.